Hello and welcome to Boxer's Shorts. I'm Adam Boxer and I'm a science teacher trying to help you understand more of GCSE science. In these short videos I will try and take difficult concepts from GCSE science, break them down, um, help you understand them and then do some practice questions on those concepts. In terms of some general tips for using these videos, definitely do not have your phone on or anywhere around you. It's a distraction and it means you won't be able to concentrate properly. The same applies for other tabs on your computer. So don't have your social media tabs open on your computer or laptop. It will just distract you. I'm going to ask you to do some questions. If you don't actually do them, you won't actually learn anything. So make sure when I do ask you to do those questions, you do them. And finally, let me know in the comments if there is a topic that you want me to cover. Thanks for listening. And remember, you can subscribe and just let me know if there's something you want me to do for you. All right, here's where things start to get really tricky, um, which is how we work out the overall energy change of a reaction. I remind you that if you're trying to watch this video without having, to without having watched any of the energy changes videos until now, you will probably struggle. And as ever, and I'll keep telling this to you guys, but I'm gonna keep saying it anyway, make sure your phone is off and away and all your tabs are closed. So just to remember back a bit, we looked at reaction profiles we had the amount of energy over there, and we had, say, reactants there and products there. And this change here is exothermic. And what we said is that that's because the reactants store this amount of energy, the products store much less energy. Well, this is your overall energy change, and that's the energy that has kind of just gone out to the surroundings. It's gone to the surroundings. It's used to heat up the surroundings. What we're going to do today is show you how to work out this. How do we work out that value? So hold that in your head, that everything we are trying to do right now is to work out what this value is. Let's start with a relatively straightforward reaction. We'll have, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna need the whole board for this. This is, this is a really difficult thing to teach because it requires loads of space on the boards. So I'll try as hard as I can. So let's take a simple reaction between hydrogen and oxygen to make water. Now, first off, this equation needs to be balanced. If you're not sure how to balance equations, I have a video for that. So make sure you check that out for the minute. I'm not gonna dwell on it. I'm just gonna balance it straight off the bat. What that means is that I've got two hydrogens, two of these got one oxygen. Now oxygen has a double bond. Like I said to you in the last video, they will almost always give you the structure and the shape of those molecules in an exam question. And on this side, I have two waters, which look like this. And essentially, these three molecules are going to react together to form these two molecules. Now, what's interesting to us is that when we look at these, we can see an HH bond here. I can't see any HH bonds here. I see an oxygen-oxygen double bond here. I can't see any oxygen-oxygen double bonds here, which essentially means that that bond's been broken, that bond's been broken, that bond's been broken. This bond has been formed, this bond has been formed, this bond has been formed, this bond has been formed. Now, that should be ringing some kind of reminder bells in your head because when we're talking about making and breaking bonds, we can add numbers to that. We can talk about how much energy that requires. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw all this out bigger so that we can see really clearly what's going on. And I'm gonna split my board in two. And I always, always, always recommend you split your work in two in an exam. It's good to ask for extra paper on this particular question so that you can get your working really nice, really laid out, really clear. I've marked exam scripts where students they are working is just like completely all over the place. They're mixing this side with this side and it's just very difficult to follow. And of course they end up dropping marks. But let's start with this side. I've got two of these hydrogens and one of these oxygens. Now I go back to my data table, and this is the data table that I gave you last time, and that has all the information that you need. And I check out my hydrogen. Hydrogen is going to be four, three, six, 
and another 436. And over here, my oxygen oxygen is 498. Very simply, I can just add all these numbers together. 436 plus 436, and I recommend you show absolutely every single line of your working. Super, super, super clear. The clearer it is, the more likely you are to get marks. Because if you make a mistake at one point, you can get marks later on, but only if you're working, it's clear. I use my calculator, as you always should, 436 plus 436 plus 498, and that would give me 1370. Uh, I've run out of space, I'm right underneath. That would give me 1370 kilojoules per mole. All right, now that is energy in. That's the energy required. That's the energy required. So that's the amount of energy I need to break all of those bonds. Remember, we said breaking bonds is endothermic. So that's the amount of energy I need to break this bond, to break this bond, to break this bond. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write it as energy in. Let's do the same on this side, H2O. I've got an H, an O, an H, an H, an O, and an H. I look at my data table for those OH bonds, and I can see that they are 4, 6, 4, 4, 6, 4, 4, 6, 4, and 4, 6, 4. Which means I'm going to do 4, 6, 4, and I can either just times it by 4 or just add them all together. I'll add them all together to make it super clear what I'm doing. And that will give me, if I pop those into my calculator, 1856 out. That's the energy that I get out when those bonds are formed. Now I can already tell just by looking at that number that this is going to be exothermic because look this number is bigger than this number. 1856 is bigger than 1370 so if I have to put 1370 in and I get 1856 out, obviously it's going to be exothermic. All right, so those are my figures, 1370, 1856. What that means is that I've had to put 1370 in, if you imagine my reaction is like a box, and I get 1856 out, which means obviously overall I'm getting out more energy than I put in. That means this reaction, if I'm getting out more than I put in, this reaction has to be exothermic. And the reason for that, and this is a like a sentence that you need to learn off by heart, is because more energy is released when making bonds and is required when breaking bonds and that is a good sentence to learn off by heart overall what is the energy change and you remember at the beginning I said this is the size essentially of the difference between those two lines in the reaction profile that will just be the difference between these two numbers. So 1856 take away 1370, it's the size of the difference between them. I plug that into my calculator and I get 486 kilojoules per mole. Now, sometimes you'll see this sum done the other way around to give you a negative number. I'm not going to worry too much about that because I'm trying to keep it simple. At the end of this video, uh, I'll do an optional bit if you are really, really interested in exactly how this works that will answer two questions. The first question is, what's the sign to this? And the second question would be, how does it actually relate to the reaction profiles? But I'll do that at the end of this video. Okay, let's take another example. Let's say I take this molecule here. Now, this is called propane. 
You'll learn a lot more about this and about the reaction I'm going to show you later on in your course. And if I kind of do a very specific type of reaction with that, I can heat it up really high and use other special substances called catalysts with it. I end up getting this. And this. So this is called methane, this is called ethene. Don't worry about the names too much, it really doesn't matter at this point. So I heat this up, I use a special chemical with it, and I get this and this together. So what's the energy change? Okay, well, I look at these and I look at my data table, and I know that these bonds are 3, 4, 7. And I know that these carbon hydrogen bonds here are 4, 1, 3. And I'm going to be meticulous. I'm going to label every single one of them because at this point students tend to get lazy and they don't write them all down and it means that further down the line when it comes to counting things up they get things wrong. So if I were to count this up I've got two three four sevens. Oh sorry I forgot you should always have your dotted line down here. Two three four sevens and I've got one two three four five six seven eight four one threes i'm going to count all that up using my calculator two lots of three four seven plus eight lots of four one three and that give me three nine nine eight kilojoules per mole and that is energy in. That's how much energy goes in to the reaction. Because that's the energy I need to break all of these bonds. On this side, it looks a bit different. And I've got a 614 over there. And then I've got more of these carbon hydrogens, these 413, 413, 413, 413. And here, I've got just carbon hydrogens, 413. 413, 413, and 413. So over here, I've got 614 plus 1, 2, 3, 4 lots of 413 plus another 4 lots of 413. When I sum all that up using my calculator, that gives me three nine one eight kilojoules per mole out now i look at this and i think okay well i'm putting in more energy than i'm getting out that means this reaction as opposed to the last one that we did is endothermic and that's because more energy is required to break the bonds than released when making the bonds. So if I need loads of energy here and slightly less energy comes back to me, then it's going to be endothermic. My overall energy change is just a simple difference like we did last time. The energy change or the energy difference is going to be 3998 take away 3918 and that will just give me 80 kilojoules per mole. And there you have an endothermic calculation. Right, now at this point you're getting closer to being able to do some yourselves. So let's have a go. What I'll do is I'll put one up here for you. And um, you can try that yourself using the data table I gave you in the last video.
Yeah, that's balanced, that's happy. So have a go at doing this one using the data table that I gave you in the last video. Um, so pause the video and once you've done that, then you can press play and we'll work through the solution together. So I've got my CHs, each of which is 413, 413, 413, 413. I've got two O double bonds, 498, 498. I'm going to put some dots down there. My COs here are 799. 799 and my OH is there 464 464 464 464 so on this side I've got four lots of 413 plus two lots of 498 which comes out as Two six four eight, and on this side, I've got two lots of seven nine nine plus four lots of four six four. Sorry for the sake of doing the same thing every time. I don't like lots four two on that side, and that will come out two times seven nine nine plus four lots of four six four gives me three four five four this is in this is out you can see this is obvious this then is exothermic and the energy change is the difference between those two which is three, four, five, four, take away two, six, four, eight. Gives you eight, zero, six kilojoules per mole. Okay, you've, <coughs> you're now able to do some practice your own, uh, of your own. <coughs> For this, what I'd like you to do is, um, I'm gonna put a link in the um, description of this video to my website that's got loads of practice work for you and if you go to the resources section um, well what I'll do is I'll just put you the link to the right page and you just find the energy changes section and there's a whole big booklet there that's got loads of practice in it and at the back of that booklet it's got a few calculations like this for you to try and it gives you the answers so you can essentially you work until you get to the correct answer it doesn't give you the working but it does give you the correct answer so you know that you've got it right now, for those of you um, for whom that is enough, then you can just stop here and I remind you to subscribe and let me know if you need anything. For those of you who were perplexed before about understanding the sign of the positive and negative um, energy changes and how it relates to the um, uh, reaction profiles, then you can hang around now and listen to this, but it is not on the GCSE course. So essentially, if you take a reaction uh, between uh, what did we do we did two H's two O's and we got that and I can't remember exactly what um, the energy change ended up being but let's say for a second we worked out that to, the energy you had to put in was 800 and the energy that you got out was a thousand let's just imagine right um then the difference was of course 200 and we can tell that it's exothermic as well and the question is how does this relate to this diagram because if you were to draw an exothermic diagram it would look like that and this if this is 800 how can that be a thousand if it's lower down and essentially this even in itself is a bit of a simplification because really what's happening here is I'm breaking up all of the bonds and I'm taking it into four separate hydrogens and two separate oxygens and then sending it back to that. So first I'm breaking all these bonds and then I am um, turning it into that. And essentially there's another line here which represents all of these as just atoms. So this line here is 
2H2 plus O2. This line here is 2H2O. This line here is an H, an H, an H, an H, an O, and an O. Now the energy that I require to get up to that is 800. The energy released when I go down to that is 1000. And then this difference here is 200. Obviously this is not drawn to scale, don't worry about that. That difference there is 200. But the direction that we're going is down. So we're going essentially it's 200 down, it's this 200 here. So sometimes you'll see that given a sign of minus 200 because it's going down. The change is down. If the change is going up, it would be plus 200. If the change is going down, it's minus 200. Uh, so that, in a nutshell, is where those numbers come from and why it actually does make sense.